the largest F-16 operation in history had failed. The overwhelming anti-air defenses and the impenetrable smoke screens deployed around Baghdad had rendered the American efforts futile, forcing them to return home with little results. Amid the turmoil of the retreat, Major Emmett Tullia was left behind and desperately tried to correct his course as he faced an unrelenting storm of anti-aircraft fire. The cockpit camera on his F-16 would record the events about to unfold. Tullia suddenly identified a SAM-guided missile dashing towards his position and tried to deploy flares, but the system didn't respond. He then reported the inbound missile through the radio as he feverishly performed a series of daring high-G maneuvers at breakneck speed. The projectile zoomed so closely that the American pilot could hear the missile's buzzing motor. The warhead detonated away from the pilot, but before he was able to catch his breath, Talia frantically turned and dived in a chain of risky evasion maneuvers, which exerted an unspeakable amount of stress on his body. The man survived, but was evidently shaken, as he reported his status through the radio. But he was not out of the woods yet. Soon, four other SAM missiles targeted his aircraft. The mentally and physically exhausted pilot would have to push his body to the limits if he wanted to survive the ordeal. Package Q-Strike Often overshadowed by more recent regional conflicts, Operation Desert Storm was a massive and ambitious endeavor that paved the way for America's interventionism in the Middle East. Iraqi forces were abysmally outclassed by the coalition forces and their state-of-the-art wartime technology, but this didn't mean they were defenseless. In fact, by the time the conflict's scale reached its boiling point in January of 1991, Baghdad was the most fortified city in the world. The SAM defenses around the capital were so significant that the coalition was forced to limit its attacks by merely using F-117 Nighthawks, which could evade enemy detection, or long-range cruise missiles, which didn't risk the lives of Allied pilots. However, the approach yielded lacking results. After months of aerial strikes, the coalition could not destroy the al tuwaita nuclear research complex, the centerpiece of Saddam Hussein's defiant nuclear program. As such, the Allied forces concocted Package Q-Strike, a massive air raid that would use conventional aircraft to deal as much damage as possible to the nuclear plant, while probing the extent of the aerial defenses posted around and inside the Iraqi capital. On January 19, 1991, 56 American F-16 warplanes, 6 F-4s, 14 F-15Cs, and two EF-111s took off from bases in Qatar and southern Saudi Arabia towards a specified rendezvous point in northern Saudi Arabia, where they would meet with six tanker aircraft tasked with refueling the fighters. The refueling process was painfully slow, and the last four aircraft to refuel were sent back to Qatar as they had fallen behind schedule. Nevertheless, with 52 F-16s, the sortie was the largest F-16 operation in history. But the brave American pilots were in for a brutal surprise. Stranded. As the formation made it to the region around Baghdad, they were met by thousands of anti-air guns. Fortunately, the fighters were flying too high to be severely damaged by the onslaught, but the situation quickly grew chaotic. On the ground, Iraqi forces deployed a massive network of smoke screens around the nuclear complex and other valuable assets in the area. The pilots navigated toward their strike targets, but it was almost impossible to attack with reliable precision. Soon, the F-16 formations were attacked by surface-to-air guided missiles, capable of reaching much higher altitudes and posing a real threat to the dozens of coalition aircraft. The F-16s then dropped their payloads, but without knowing if they had found their targets. Overwhelmed by the fierce defenses, the formations turned around and hurried south. Several F-16s were hit by enemy fire and reported as damaged, but as the bulk of the force retired from the area, no U.S. aircraft had been shot down. Arriving later than intended, Major Emmett Tullia, identifying as Stroke 3, dived from the clouds and approached the oil refinery he had been tasked with striking. 
The pilot didn't realize that he was alone, and soon all the anti-air defenses were targeting his F-16. Before he could unleash his payload, he detected an S-75 Davina Soviet-made missile approaching his position and announced over the radio, quote, Stroke 3, defending SA-2. He then deployed his chaff, but it didn't appear to affect the missile. A lethal dance. Footage captured by the pilot's cockpit camera shows the intensity of the maneuvers taken by the bold airman to avoid the zooming projectile. The images show how the pilot executes a series of drastic high-G turns, one after another, in a desperate attempt to dodge the missile in the last second before it strikes. The projectile then scrapes by and detonates at a safe distance. Telia remains calm and reports his status over the radio. However, he is now alone and flying over the most fortified city on Earth. Determined to accomplish his mission, he flies toward the oil refinery and drops his two 2,000-pound bombs over the target. As he turns to start his trip back to base, his F-16 begins to sound the alarm of an incoming missile. Over the radio, a voice yells at him, quote, Stroke 3, break right, break right. Instincts take over, and he veers ferociously to the right in a sharp turn that exerts an unspeakable force on his body. As he moves, three SA-3 missiles pass by so close that he can hear the buzzing sound of their motors. His wingman, Major Jeffrey S. Tice, had just saved his life. Several pilots call through the radio, desperately trying to learn if Talia is okay. After several seconds, he finally answers, informing them that he is egressing from the area. As he recovers himself, another alarm echoes inside his cockpit, and he yells, quote, SA-6, stroke three, defending six. Another series of high-G maneuvers ensue, and despite his intense efforts, the missile doesn't lose its target and continues to dash ominously toward Talia. A last frantic turn finally deceives the missile, which explodes dangerously close to the F-16, but miraculously avoids any damage. With no time to catch his breath, Talia screams, quote, There's another one, stroke three, defending again. By now, Talia's aircraft has lost so much speed and altitude that he has no choice but to dive drastically to gain escape speed. As the aircraft swoops down, it comes within range of the anti-aircraft batteries on the ground, unleashing a firestorm upon the shattered pilot and his warplane. Fortunately, the pursuing missile suddenly loses its target and plummets inertly into the ground. Talia then climbs quickly to avoid anti-aircraft fire and moves south. As the footage ends, the man and his warplane are unscathed. He has just survived the impossible. The overall operation was a failure, with the strike stealing only minor damage to the Altawaita Nuclear Research Facility. The mission also cost the Coalition two F-16s that were lost on the way back to base after being damaged during the battle. But despite the disappointing results, no one could deny Major Emmett Tullia's incredible and legendary feat, especially as it was recorded by his cockpit camera for the world to see. Thank you for watching Dark Footage. Don't hesitate to click on your screen and check out our other Dark Documentaries channels where we explore the most epic battles and the breakthrough technology that changed the course of history. Also hit the bell icon to be notified of our latest content. And stay tuned.